And you're listening to Communities Live on Sheffield Live Radio, 93.2 FM, with Susie Casson. Ian Prance. And? Oh, Paul Casson, you I'm just a guest for today. If you're in chiselling sounds, I'm doing a sculpture at the moment. Great. And we're going to be chatting to Ian now, who is a celebrant. That's right. I believe. Yeah, uh, yeah. A, a humanist wedding and funeral celebrant. Yeah. Fantastic. So can you tell us, first of all, what is a celebrant? Uh, well, I conduct funerals and weddings without a religious consent. So they're very much bespoke uh, ceremonies, which focus entirely on, in the case of a funeral, the person who's died, or in terms of a couple getting married, what they want it to be. You know, it's highly personalised. I have to say, in England at the moment, we we don't legally marry couples when we do a wedding. That's the kind of... In Scotland, when you train to be a humanist celebrant, you also become a registrar which means that you, the whole process is done by you. As usual, England seems to lag behind, lag behind Scotland <laughs> in its legislation. And there are plans for it to, um, there are plans for it to be uh, the same in England. But right now, we just do a ceremony. But the, of course, the registrar ceremony is fairly bland, and people want a bit more than that. And so that's yeah. what we provide. Great. So somebody could just have you and not have the legal part if they wanted. Yeah, if they yeah. just wanted to have a ceremony to share their commitment to each other in front of their family and friends, they could do that without being without becoming legally married. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I've never known that, by the way. Most no. people have tended to <laughs> yeah get that out of the way and then have the you know the big wedding day kind of thing. Yeah. Lovely. So it sounds really interesting. Do you do it in various locations? Yeah, I did a wedding on Saturday out at Thornbridge Hall, you know, home of the Thornbridge Brewery, and uh, it was beautiful, beautiful ground, and the weather was perfect for it, perhaps even a little bit too hot, but yeah, I've done them in marquees, um, conference centres, a field near, near Edale, so yeah, we have lots of different venues, it's up to the couple really. Yeah. Um, Unlike with the, it, it, if we became registrars, it might change that because venues have to be licensed to conduct weddings. And at the moment, again, in in England, not in Wales and not in Scotland, but in England, it's not legal to be married outdoors. Basically, there has mm. to be a roof over your head. <laughs> so that's a bit of bizarre, yeah. arcane. Depends blah, how you blah, define blah. it as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. So, how long have celebrants been in existence? It's um, I really don't know. I, I, I did my training in uh, 2009 with the British Humanist Association. And um, I, I, I know it had been going for a long time before that. I've come from a family of, of non-religious people. And in 2000, we had a humanist ceremony for my mum. And since then, I know the popularity of certainly of humanist funerals has, has sort of started to increase quite dramatically, you know, when people realise that religion has not been a part of that person's life and there's a kind of more appropriate way of remembering them. Mm, and it can be so personal as well, can't it? It's a nice tribute. Yeah, I, I tend to, when, I'm, I, when I meet a family, I take notes and listen and then I go away and put it into a script. But really, I try not to via, veer too far from what I've been told by the family, you know, I think we've all been to funerals where you have a vicar or whoever's conducting the ceremony saying, I think this and I think that. And in truth, that's not what the family, the family wants to hear about the person who they've mm -hmm. lost. So. Yeah, absolutely. So I was going to ask you, does it entail a lot of preparation? Um, yeah, once, once you get asked to conduct the ceremony uh, for a funeral, you will then go out and meet the family. And that some, sometimes can be quite a challenge if there are lots of people you might have up to I think I've had as many as 16 people in the room <laughs> we've all got their individual mm. take so you're writing furiously you know but it's very productive as well because you get lots of snippets yeah. of a life that make for an interesting yeah. story if you like yeah. <coughs> excuse me um so you meet the family go away put something together send a draft to them because that ultimately it's it's a it's their day it's their important day and it's important that it fits in and invariably you get something wrong you you kind of mistake a person or a date or and, and it gives them the opportunity to put it right and and they know that when they arrive on the day particularly for a funeral there are no surprises you know that everything that they're going to hear the people who are closest to the to the deceased 
it's what they've put together. Mm. Oh, that sounds brilliant. So you qualified in 2009. Yeah. Why did you decide to get into that kind of area? Um, in 2008, my dad died, and we had a humanist ceremony for him. And my then partner said, why don't you do this? You've always done acting, and you don't mind standing at the front. Writing creatively is something that you can do. So I thought about it for a bit and left it for long enough that it could seem like it was my idea and <laughs> then and then decided to train as a celebrant. And actually, coming from a sort of acting background, it feels like a real luxury because you've got a script in front of you. You know, you've not had to learn your lines. Mm -hmm. So it feels <laughs> like a, a bit of a luxury almost to be mm -hmm. stood there with words that you can refer to. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so that, uh, that's why I did it, mm. and and it's really rewarding work, you mm. know. So you've done lots of different funerals and weddings, mainly in various locations. Is there any sort of ambition you'd really like to be involved with? Uh, in, as a celebrant? Yeah. Uh, no, not greatly. It's just I get the satisfaction from making a, a day, if it's a wedding, obviously it's a mm. day of, uh, of celebration, uh, making that as bespoke to the to the couple as, as they want it to be. And I think the, the greatest satisfaction I get from a funeral is when, if a guest comes and says, that you, you had him to a tea there, that was it. I feel like that's, that's the job. It's not about me as the person at the front, it's just reflecting the life of somebody who's no longer around. So, yeah. so just, to keep doing a good job, really, and to, you know, keep yeah. <laughs> keep and, on top of it, I suppose. And you're sort of part of a very special time in people's lives on both occasions, aren't you, really? It's, yes. You feel really part of the yeah. and family. It, if you meet people after you've conducted the ceremony, mm. it does feel like a friendship, you know. Mm. You've, it, yeah. in that, although you don't meet them very often, and you mm. feel like you've made a bond, you mm. know. And yeah. I find it interesting as well that when you're doing the ceremony, Obviously, sometimes members of the family choose to stand up and speak, which can be is a very brave thing to do, you know, and it's quite daunting. Mm. And uh, sometimes they get a little bit overawed. And what I've found over the years is if I just move and stand next to them, mm. somehow that human connection, you know, mm. I could I could take over, but yeah. they don't need you to. Mm. They just, yeah. just go and stand next to somebody gives them that little bit of extra resolve and they mm. can pick their head back up and get their voice back and, and continue. Yeah. And I find that, as a humanist, it's mm. you know, the power of sort of collective uh, working together mm. is really nice, you know. Oh, enjoy yeah. that yeah. side of it. That's good. So you were saying about getting the details right is really important, isn't it? Have you yeah. had anything go really wrong? Um, I don't think about any major disasters. Um, You've got me there, you're making me think now. Um, Not yet. <laughs> I've had a bride who was coming across the field and she realised that the heels weren't going to make it, Aww. so she changed to flip-flops and then <laughs> slipped, the, yeah. slipped the heels on at, at the door. Uh, but that was not, not of my doing. Um, I don't think I've... Uh, oh, I, I remember once saying um, at this wedding ceremony when I meant funeral ceremony Aww. so that <laughs> yeah. was a bit that was a bit awkward yeah. uh, the main thing is time you know because unfortunately crematoriums are, work on a business mm. model and you, you can mm. sometimes there's a danger of overrunning you know that you that there's so much to say about a person and everybody's mm. you know the, the the attendants at the at the crematorium mm. are looking at their watch and thinking yeah. oh, we're going to overrun because we've got another family outside and that's that's your biggest fear, is mm. that uh, yeah, that and music not working, which, as we know, being on <laughs> the radio here, yeah, you know, <laughs> sometimes you put a CD in and you say, well, it worked at home and there's no sound. But now they have a computerised system, mm. which has most of the music that you'd want, and that's largely a, a thing of the past, having the, the music nightmare. Yeah, and I think even funerals and especially weddings are more relaxed than they used to be, even in the last few decades, aren't they? Very much so, yeah. yeah. I mean, a celebration I, at a funeral, isn't it? Then I, I say to the families, look, I don't uh, routinely wear a black tie. I wear a suit, but I don't wear a black tie. Yeah. I've only had one family in all the time, and I've done upwards of 60 or 70 funerals now. 
um, that have said, oh, actually, we would like you to... He would have wanted you to wear a black tie. He was quite a formal man. Um, but, yeah, people are more relaxed. And the choice of music is, you know, mm. can be very eclectic and, and reflect the person. Mm. Some people think they're being clever and they want to have prodigy, I'm a fire starter, as yeah. the music going out. They don't realise it's been done before. <laughs> yes. I've listened to My Way quite a number of times and Simply the Best quite a number of times. But, mm. you know, that's that's fine. If, that's what the, if, that's, mm. if that reflects how the family are feeling, that's OK. But I also get, I was saying to you before we were, we were on air that sometimes mm. I'll hear music that I've never heard before so I have to go and take mm. a screenshot of the computer system so I remember it for later you know so yeah. you're learning all the time really you know yeah. it's like everything but just yeah great you know. sounds a lot of variety yeah and um, so what would you say are your most memorable weddings and funerals that you've been a celebrant at um well, well last year I, I got a message on the anniversary of the wedding I try and sort of just say hello to the people at my wedding anniversary but I got a message I'd done a, a wedding in 2014 which was a bilingual wedding because the groom was French so we we did it in English and French now mm. I can speak a bit of French but I didn't want to punish the French contingent <laughs> having traveled so far by inflicting my you know clunk along mm. French on them so I did but I did the introduction in French to welcome people and apparently the French guests really appreciated mm. that but then after that uh, it was the groom's mum and me who did the who did mm. the speaking and that really felt like a lovely collaborative mm. gesture and then uh, I try and sort of buy a small gift for the for the couple and it seemed appropriate for these two to have a an English grape and a French grape, mm. you know, to, to blend, blend together. So I bought uh, them a vine, and it was nice to hear last mm -hmm. year that the vines had flourished in their garden, you know, and were mm. doing well. So that was that was quite memorable. Yeah. But each one has its own memories, really, you know. Yeah. Just it's just being part of somebody's special day. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So I was going to ask you, what do you find most challenging about being a celebrant? Um. It's, it's the getting it right, really. It's yeah. making sure that you that you are. It's the time when I send the, the draft script off. I, there's that kind of point where I've done my bit and I'm not, where they're waiting to hear. And sometimes it comes back with lots of typos and uh, not typos, but you know, um, amendments and alterations, and that's fine. Uh, but it's that time of not knowing I find the most challenging. You think, oh, are they going to be happy with it? Or are they going to come back and say, actually, we don't like it at all? Yeah. I did I did get once get asked to do a, a funeral. I talked to the family for a while, and it turned out that the the family were actually Jehovah's Witnesses, and, and they mm. wanted me because there'd been a, a fallout in the family, so I was being asked to act as a mediator, which mm -hmm. that was yeah. a bit of a challenge. And, mm. I, you know, I had to say... I, I can't really yeah. help you out on that, but I think they got sorted out in the end. I think they got yeah. resolution to their problem. Yeah, oh, lovely. And so what do you find most enjoyable about being a celebrant? Just that being able to make, thinking of funerals in particular, to make a difficult day into an enjoyable day. You know, it's sad, but it doesn't have to be miserable. And mm. to be able to have a celebration of a life, and that's what we call our ceremonies, a celebration of a life, is 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 a great feeling. That's the most satisfying bit of it all, really. Mm. You know, the weddings are good too, but you kind of, the expectation is that they are going to be yeah. <laughs> uh, an enjoyable day anyway. Yeah. But they're, they're, they're always great fun. You know, there's a, the time we have a rehearsal beforehand and you can see people arrive thinking, why are we having a rehearsal? And then the next, they move on to the, what on earth? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. And they're panicking. Yeah. And then finally, you know, they, they realise, oh, now I know why we're having a rehearsal. Yes. So oh, it's good. great. It's, yeah, it's very yeah. exciting, that bit, you yeah. know, when you see it all come together. Wow, it sounds wonderful. Thanks for telling us that, about that. You're welcome. Ian. If people wanted to hire you, are, are you available? I you? am, yeah. How yeah. would we get in touch with you? Um, you can, I have a, I have um an email address which is ianjfrance at hotmail.com I have a website which is part of my other another bit of my work which is um, www.whatifchange.co.uk um, yeah so they could get me through that really okay. um, and it's mainly weddings and funerals but do you do christenings 
I, no, I don't no. do namings. I mean, some no, people do. Right. There are there are there are celebrants mm. who do namings, but I'm not yeah. one of them. Yeah, I just yeah. stick to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it sounds wonderful. Matching and dispatching. <laughs> yeah, it sounds wonderful, and you'll go into people's memories as memory of that special day. It's